You say you'd like a lesson in cheating at cards. Well, you might actually be better at it than you realize. So what we can do is let's get a deck of cards here. I happen to have a deck of cards. And uh, you know in poker, the hand has five cards, and some hands are better than others. For example, if this hand had, say, two threes and two sixes, that's, that's two pairs. That's excellent. Or maybe if your hand had three nines, that's three of a kind. That's, that's really quite a good hand. So let's imagine that you're playing poker, say, dealing with five players, and you need 25 cards, and so here's about 25 cards, and I wanted you to pick those up and deal some number one at a time face down, just to kind of mix them up a little bit there, some eight, ten cards, whatever whatever you like. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now square them up and give them, give them a good little shuffle. Okay, so we can kind of see. Okay, that's a pretty good shuffle. Okay, and now let's uh, pick them up and deal our five poker hands. Okay, good. Okay, everybody has five players. Each one gets the first card. And now each one gets the second card. Very good. The third card. Okay, good. Fourth card coming up. And finally the fifth card. Now if you were kind of cheating, you might want a particular person to have a very good hand. For example, let's let's take let's see what the hand we have uh, in the player right here. What does he have? He has a uh, ace queen eight. Well, that's, I'm afraid that's I'm afraid that's not a very good hand. Uh, but this is a warm up. So let's uh, let's pick up the packs in some order, any order you like. Uh, put make one big pack out of everything, and uh, some order, kind of a crazy order. Okay. And now let's deal five more poker hands. Okay. Okay, this is the real thing. Okay, so that was the warm-up first. Now this is the real thing. And uh, here we go. Everybody gets a card. There's card number three. Card number four coming up. And finally, everybody gets fifth card. Okay, now if you are really good at cheating, you might like this person, for example, to have a very good hand. So why don't we turn over the cards one at a time and see what he's got. A five, pretty good. Another five, very good. Three fives, wow. Four or five, four of a kind, fantastic, very good. You really are a lot better than you thought. But you know, actually if you're going to make money cheating cards, you might like this person to have a very good hand, four of a kind, he's going to bet a lot, and maybe your confederate in this position has a better hand. So let's turn over his cards. He has a king of spades, a ten of spades, a jack of spades, a queen of spades, an ace of spades, a royal flush. The very best possible hand. That is fantastic. Congratulations. You are really good at cheating. <laughs> you may wonder how that previous trick was done. Well, it depends on a principle in magic called the Gilbraith principle. And here's an example of the Gilbraith principle. Here we have an arrangement of cards. Ace, two, three, four. Ace, two, three, four. Ace, two, three, four. Kind of periodic. Okay, so it turns out if you take this arrangement, and it doesn't depend on four, but this I'm using four for an example. And you put down, in reverse order, some number of cards. I don't know, maybe that many. I don't know how many that was, really. You take these two packs and you shuffle them together, which I will do. They are now shuffled together. Now, with this shuffle deck, which is in an arrangement called the Gilbraith permutation, has the property, if you take four consecutive cards from the top and look at them, you'll see you have ace, two, three, four in some order. Here are the next four cards, one ace, one, two, one, three, one, four. The next four cards, one ace, one, two, one, three, one, four, and so forth. And that was the basis on which the previous trick was done. Now you might say, how does the Gilbraith principle relate to the Mandelbrot set, which of course is one of the most celebrated constructs in mathematics. Uh, it turns out that one of the iterative steps in constructing the Mandelbrot set takes a particular number, say C, and you keep squaring and adding C to whatever you had. So for example, starting with zero, you square zero, which is zero, and add C, you get C. Now again, if you have C, you take C squared plus C. That's some number, and you take that number, square it, and add C. Certain values of C have the property that you end up back at zero after some finite number of steps. 
And if you take those values that you get going from zero back to zero and arrange them in an appropriate order, you will get an example of the Gilbraith arrangement, the Gilbraith shuffle. And this is kind of the connection between iterating this quadratic map and the Gilbraith principle. But uh, I can't really say too much more about it here, but if you want to know a lot more about it, you might want to read the coverage we get in Magical Mathematics, which is a recent book by Percy Diaconis and myself, and we spill all the secrets about that in this book.